Welcome to your practice. My name's Sophie, and today I'm guiding you through a strong flow with a focus on neck and shoulder TLC. So if you're feeling like your neck slash shoulders um, need some love, but you also want to get in a strong flow, this is a great daily practice. So we'll need a block for today's class. And if you don't have a block at home, you're welcome to skip the parts that we use a block or just do something different. We won't use it a whole lot, but we are starting out with the block and we'll go right into it. We're going to lay down on our back with our head on the block. And I'm gonna show you here that when you put your head on the block, you want the edge of the block to be pressing right into the space below your skull. So you'll feel it. So come on down and put your head on the block on the lowest height and feel how the block is um, the edge of the block is right at the base of your skull and now your knees are bent your feet are flat on the ground bring your chin down into your chest right away you'll you might be like oh now i feel it so that's really important as the chin comes down you kind of tilt your pelvis forward a little bit so your back arches and lifts off of the ground You can use that position and use your feet to kind of push yourself into the ground and push your neck into the block. Now it depends on the how soft your block is um, and just how um, your fascia, your tissue and the fascia on the neck are um, feeling today. Now, all of that depends um, on how you're going to feel here. You might not feel much, you might feel a lot. Now bring your head all the way over to the right. So just turn all the way and look to the right and then slowly bring your head halfway back to center so right in that halfway mark is where where you'll probably feel the muscle and if you can't feel it chin down a little bit more and try to breathe and relax as you let the pressure of the block do its thing Slowly bring your head back to center and slowly drop your head over to the left side. Turn all the way to the left and then bring it back up about halfway. Slow your breath down. Bring your head back to center. Lift your head up. Move the block out of the way. Put your head back down to the ground. And extend your legs long. Take your arms overhead. Cross your right ankle over your left leg. Right ankle over left ankle. And bring your legs over to the left a little bit more. Grab onto your right wrist with your left hand. And take a side bend to the left. Left shoulder draws down. You're creating a banana shape from through the left side body, stretching to the right side body. Bring it all back to center. Left ankle crosses over right ankle. Move your legs to the right. Grab onto your left wrist with your right hand. Take a side bend over to the right. Move your right shoulder down and away from your ear so you can get more of a bend. Deep breaths. Let's bring it back to center. And extend your arms overhead. Um, straighten your legs. You're taking a full body stretch. Inhale. On your exhale, hug your knees into your chest and rock side to side. We'll make our way up into a seat. We'll just rock on up. We're gonna sit on our block. We take your block on the lowest height again. Sit on the block and take your legs out wide like so. Like you're just hanging out. Then with your left hand, grab onto your right shin. 
So cross your arm over and take your right hand behind you into a half bind or just place the palm of the hand on your lower back. Doesn't really matter that much. Now pu push actively with your leg, push your right knee out to the right. So just extend it out to the right and keep holding on to the shin and you'll feel traction on the back of the left shoulder and that's where the, that's where we're aiming for the stretch here it's almost like you're pulling your bones apart on your arm to create nice sensation on the back of the shoulder the more you push your right knee away from you the more you'll feel it continue to twist and at the same time maybe draw your shoulder blades towards each other sort of open up in the, between the collarbones on your chest now slowly release and switch sides right hand to left shin left hand behind you push your left knee away from you breathe and can you open up the space in the front of your chest a little bit more by squeezing your shoulder blades towards each other very gentle not a huge movement take two more breaths And slowly come back to center. And just cross your legs, sit on the edge of your block just like you normally do. Interlace your hands and flip your palms up. Take a side bend to the right. Come back to center. Side bend left. Back to center. Round your spine like you're doing cat. Chin towards your chest. Inhale, rise back up, a little, maybe a little back bend. Exhale, round and curl. Inhale, rise back up. Exhale, round, stay here. And imagine like you're turning a steering wheel, turn to the right. Come back to center and turn your steer steering wheel to the left. Come back to center, reach your arms up and release your arms down. Rest your hands onto your thighs and tilt your right ear to your right shoulder. Be very gentle. If you actually are experiencing um, neck pain, like maybe you woke up with neck pain or you did something and then you got a pain in your neck and it hasn't gone away since, then you want to be really, really, really careful with stretching. And sometimes when it comes to stretching like this, it's better if you're right in the midst of that neck injury to back off and actually do less. Let it heal. Bring your head back to center, left ear to left shoulder. You can kind of think of it like as if you tore your hamstring muscle, you wouldn't stretch it. You would just let it heal and try to stay off of it. Same idea. But if your neck feels okay today, then going into the stretches um, fully is fine. And just listen to your body. Deep breaths. And bring your head back up to center. And imagine like you have a wall behind your head. And you're trying to get your head to touch the wall. So kind of do a double chin. And then slowly look up. Gaze all the way up and hold. And bring your head back to neutral. Let's make our way into tabletop. And tuck your toes. And come up onto your fingertips. Walk your hands back. Sit back on your heels, but keep your hands down. And bring your hands as close as you can to your knees. Then lift your knees up off of the ground. Sit back and bring your chin towards your knees. So we have full flexion of the spine here, all the way up to the neck, rounding and curling. Then bring your knees back down, sit upright, and then stand on the knees. So just come off of your heels. Keep your toes tucked. And put your hands behind your back with your fingers facing down and go right into camels. So now we're going into extension of the spine. Rise back up. Put your fingers down, 
on the ground, fingertips on the ground, lift your knees and round and curl, same thing. Now bring your knees down, rise all the way up, camel, place your hands behind you, lean back, push your hips forward, rise back up, sit down on your heels, place your hands down, round and curl as you lift your knees up. And bring your knees down, rise up, put your hands behind you, back bend. Rise on up, this time just sit on your heels, hands on your knees, or on your thighs I mean, and you get a stretch in the bottoms of your feet and the toes. And as we're here, bring your chin down to your chest. If it's too much on your toes, feel free to come off of them. So chin is down, and then tilt your right ear towards your right shoulder while your chin is still down, just a little. Then bring your chin back down to center. Tilt your left ear to your left shoulder. And back down. And keep going side to side. Don't go all the way around with the neck. It's much safer to just keep the chin down and do half circles. Feels much better too. And bring your chin back down to your chest. Slowly bring your head up. Come on to the hands and knees, untuck your toes, child's pose, forehead to the earth. Three deep breaths. Make your way back up into table, tuck your toes, lift your knees and hips, downward facing dog, and continue to walk your hands to, hands to the back of the mat. Grab onto your elbows and let your upper body hang heavy, and perhaps you sway side to side. So no effort in the neck. Maybe you shake out your head to help remind yourself or teach yourself to relax the neck completely. And switch the grip of your arms. The other arm is in front. Continue to sway. And release your hands down. And pedal out your legs by bending one knee at a time. Continue to relax the head completely. And then start to walk your hands all the way back out to down dog. Hips are lifted high. Again, shake out the head. Lift your heels and lower them back down. And then find a good in-between point between heels high and heels to the earth. And we'll ripple forward into a plank by rolling through the upper back. So first round through the upper back like cat. And then shift all the way into plank. And bring your knees an inch off of the ground. Shift your hips back into floating child's pose and lift your hips up and roll through the upper back into plank. Knees come down an inch off the ground. Shift the hips back, lift the hips up, roll into plank. Keep going on your own through your spinal rolls. One more time. We'll land in down dog. Walk your feet up to your hands. Lift up halfway, inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, stand, reach your arms up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Arms down by your sides. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank. Inhale. Exhale, lower down halfway by bending your elbows. Hold. And then come all the way down to the ground. Untuck your toes and peel your chest away from the ground for cobra. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale. Breath in again, and let it go. Shake out your head. Look forward now and step or hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. 
exhale fold inhale stand reach up exhale hands to heart arms down by your sides inhale reach up urdhva hastasana exhale forward fold uttanasana inhale halfway lift exhale step or hop back to chaturanga or to plank and then chaturanga upward facing dog or cobra and downward facing dog breath in breath out bring your feet together and lift your right leg up bend your knee open your hip straighten the right leg all the way out so draw your right hip down and your left hip back inhale exhale step your foot between your hands plant your left hand down and reach your right arm up for a twist reach your right arm over your ear and anchor back through your right hip rotate your chest to the right more right palm still faces down left arm is strong shift your weight a little bit forward reach your right arm up inhale exhale put your right hand back down to the ground and put your back knee down on the ground untuck your toes inhale open up through the chest exhale straighten your right leg inhale bend through the right knee exhale straighten the right leg one more time inhale bend and exhale straight stay here maybe you slide the heel forward a little bit and maybe if you want more your hands can go over to the right you can always put your hands on a block or you can just keep your hands framing your front foot two more breaths here bring your hands back to frame your foot bend your knee back into low lunge and reach your arms up for anjaneyasana take your arms out wide and take the left arm under the right arm for eagle arms your elbows your shoulders move forward so the shoulder blades are protracting and moving away from each other Good. and then take a back bend here lifting and arching through the upper back squeeze the shoulder the hips towards each other and rise back up unwind your arms and bring them into cactus then interlace your hands behind your head and turn to the right you won't get too too much of a turn here just because the hands are behind the head it limits our rotation a little bit and that's okay take another full breath in and out Come back to center, release your hands down to the ground, lift your back knee, and step back into plank. Lower down halfway and hold for three, two, rise back up on one, hold here. And again, lower down, hold, three, two, one, rise back up. One more time, hold, three, two, upward facing dog on one, and downward facing dog. Breath in and out. Feet together, lift your left leg up, bend your knee, open your hip. Straighten your left leg out, square your hips. And step your left foot between your hands. Put your back knee down onto the ground. Sorry, lift your back knee, plant your right hand, left arm up, we're twisting first. Squeeze your hips towards each other and left arm over your ear as you rotate more to the left. Reach your left arm back up. Put your left hand down onto the ground. Now put your back knee down untuck your back toes and draw the shoulders back inhale exhale straighten the left leg inhale bend exhale straight inhale bend 
exhale straight stay here slide your left foot forward a little bit so half splits Ardha Hanumanasana half monkey pose you could take your arms over to the left if you want notice if there's a tension or any gripping around the neck and shoulders and can you just intentionally release that on the exhale letting go And bring your hands back to frame your front foot. Come back into low lunge. Back knee stays down as you sweep your arms up. Strong core. Take your arms wide. And take the right arm under the left arm for eagle arms. And lift up and bend back. We'll come back to neutral, unwind the arms into cactus, then interlace your hands behind your head and start to turn to the left, push down to the top of your back foot. Come back to center, release your arms down, lift your back knee and step back into plank. Lower onto your forearms for forearm plank. Now walk your feet in a little bit so it's like you're coming into dolphin, but um, maybe not as far in as you possibly can. Then look forward a little bit and shift forward. So you're shifting your shoulders closer to your wrists and then go back to your dolphin. Shift forward and back. We're doing dolphin push-ups, strengthening the shoulders. Forward, back. Five more. Three more. Press your hands down firmly as you do this. One more time. Forward and back. Now walk your feet in so you're in further into your dolphin feet towards your hands, but your knees are slightly bent, your hips are lifted, and then look towards your shins so your head is relaxed. Press into the forearms for three, two, one, lower your hips down, your knees down, I mean. Knees together, arms by your sides, child's pose. Take your arms all the way down by your sides. Maybe you even grab onto your heels. And slowly rise on up. We'll make our way back into down dog. Bring your feet together. Lift your right leg up. Inhale. Step your foot between your hands on your exhale. And rise up to warrior two. Sweep your arms open. Bend into your front knee. Reach your right arm up. And put your right hand behind the back of your neck so your right elbow is pointing up. Internally rotate your left arm so the thumb is facing down. Then bring your left hand to your mid-back and see if you can clasp hands. And if not, that's okay. That's not definitely not the goal. And bend into the front knee. Knit the ribs in. Breathe. Maybe a little reverse warrior if you have, feel like you have space for it in your body. And then come back to warrior two. Straighten your right leg and bring your hands onto your hips. Turn your right toes in to face the left. Inhale, exhale, fold forward, bring your hands down. Option to interlace your hands behind the back of your neck. Just let the pinky fingers rest kind of on the back of the head. Let gravity do the work here. Make sure you have a little bend of the knees, micro bend. And release your hands down. Lift up halfway. Bend your left knee into side lunge. Press into the outer edge of your right foot. 
and then face the front of the mat for a low lunge. So pivot, turn, face forward. Put the back knee down on the ground, but slide it up a little bit so it's directly under your left hip, knee under hip. Plant the left hand down, reach the right arm up, and swing your right leg behind you to come into a modified side plank. Then bend your right knee, reach back and grab onto your right foot. Kick your foot into your hand. You should feel this nice traction on the front of the right shoulder as you kick back and the right arm straightens a lot. Keep the core engaged so you're not just dumping forward with the belly. Extend the right leg straight back, reach the right arm up. And put your right hand down, come into tabletop. Drop the belly, lift your chest for cow, round the spine for cat. Come back to neutral, tuck your toes, lift your knees and hips for down dog. Feet together. Lift your left leg all the way up. Inhale. Step your left foot between your hands on your exhale. Rise up to warrior two. Bend into your front knee. Knit the ribs in. Press back into your, the outer edge of your right foot. Reach your left arm up. Bring the hand to the uh, lower, to the neck, <laughs> below the skull. Right arm internally rotates so the thumb faces down and then bring your arm around. That way we get the full rotation. Maybe clasp hands, maybe not. And notice if maybe you can do it on one side versus the other. This side a little harder for me. Keep the strength of the back leg. Don't start to bend into the back knee. I know there's a lot going on here. Breathe. Option for a little reverse warrior if the body allows. Come back up, unwind your arms, straighten your left leg, put your hands on your hips, turn your left toes in. This time we'll interlace the hands behind the back, all the way to the webbing, all the way to the palms. Keep the palms together, roll the shoulders back. Inhale, exhale, fold forward. The arms go up and over, the weight shifts into your toes. Relax the head. Option to bend your left knee and turn open to the right. Right shoulder opens to the right. Just the, be the left knee is just bent a little bit to give your yourself more space to twist. Come back to center. Slight bend of the right knee. Turn to the left. Come back to center. Release your hands down, lift up halfway, and bend your right knee into a side lunge. Press down into the outer edge of your left foot. Then front of the mat, low lunge, face forward. Put your back knee down, and then slide the knee up an inch so that it's directly under the right hip. Plant the right hand down, lift the left arm up, and slowly swing the left leg back behind you. You're facing the left side of the mat. Bend your left knee, reach back for your foot. So try to grab onto the foot so when it's high up, instead of having to like bring the knee in and then grab. So you're really using the strength of your leg to kick the leg back, and then you grab. Now, kick back like you're about to gear up to shoot a bow and arrow, really like pulling back on the, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I don't know much about bow and arrows, if anyone knows. I guess it would just be the bow. You're pulling back on the bow. One more breath. Re-extend the leg, reach the arm up, put the left hand down, and make your way into table. Hmm. Tuck your toe, lift your knees and hips for down dog. Now shift forward into plank and lower all the way down to the ground, however you'd like, way you'd like to get there. And take your right arm out to the right. And actually take your left arm out to the left, plant your right hand down, bend your right knee. Now turn your head, look to the right. Relax your head on the ground, but look to the right. Come up onto your left fingertips so your hand isn't flat on the ground and roll over the left side body. 
try to stay up on your left fingertips so you have a little bit of a lift, the elbow is like lifted off the ground. And then we'll come back down to center, plant the left hand down, take the right arm out, look to the left, rest your head down, bend your left knee, rise up onto your right fingertips, roll over the right side body, left toes rest behind you. Breathe into the spine. Come back down onto your belly. Now, come onto your, both of your hands underneath of you. Now take your left arm and weave it underneath the right arm and lift your right knee up and reach your, like you're laying in bed at night and take your right arm up and over all the way to the right for a supine twist. We just came into it from a prone position. When you're on your back, it's supine. When you're on your belly, that's prone. See if you can... Um, move your left shoulder to the left a little bit to get your upper back more flush to the ground. Maybe your left hand goes onto your right knee. Your right elbow bends slightly. Maybe like a lot, like you're in cactus with your right arm. And again, notice any gripping. Maybe it's in the hips, maybe in the neck, maybe in the shoulders. Let the breath soften you. And bring your right arm back around to meet the left. And slide your right leg back, but keep your left arm where it is. So your left arm is still threaded underneath of you, okay? Then with your, put your left hand to your right, the back of your right shoulder. Take your right arm behind you. Internally rotate the right arm so the thumb completely turns and faces um, to the left side. And then bring it around and see if you can clasp hands here. And if you can't clasp, that's okay too. Just relax your head down. Slowly release the grip, unwind your arms, come back onto your hands and slide your right arm underneath to the left, lift your, or slide your left knee up and lift your left arm all the way up and around so you're twisting and opening up to the sky and to the left. See if you can move your right shoulder out to the right a little bit more. Your right hand can go onto your left knee. Your left arm's in a bent position. And breathe into the front of the left shoulder, the left pec muscles right on your chest. And bring your left arm back around. Keep your right arm as it is, but just extend your left leg back again. Now, um, take your right hand, bring it to the back of your left shoulder. Rest your head on the ground. Take your left arm around, internally rotate so the thumb faces behind you. And then bring your hands towards each other on your back. Release your hands, come back onto the hands, hands on the ground, and press yourself up into table. Round your spine for cat, stay in cat. And come back into neutral and make your way into a seat. So we'll take the legs straight out in front of us and we'll shake out the legs. Then plant the hands behind you with the your fingers facing forward. Let's go into reverse plank. So point your toes forward, 
and lift your hips up. You can also do reverse table by bending the knees and having the feet flat on the ground. So we're strengthening the back body here and creating a lot of extension through the spine as we draw the shoulders back for three, two, one, lower down to the ground and bend your knees. Have your hands behind you um, or have your hands, keep your hands where they are. They're already behind you. Now bend your elbows back and squeeze your elbows towards each other and then lift your chest through your shoulders. And slowly rise up, extend your legs straight out in front of you, reach your arms forward, slight bend of the knees, grab onto the feet, Paschimottanasana, fold, relax your head. Slowly rise up. Make your way onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest. Rock side to side. And then place your feet flat onto the ground, arms down by your sides, and lift your hips up for bridge. And in fact, grab your block, make sure it's near you. And then lift your hips up and slide your block underneath your pelvis, um, right under the sacrum, so like below the lower back, but right up, maybe above the tailbone. And about right there, it's resting on the back of your iliac crest. Supported bridge. Maybe you take your knees, a your feet a little bit wider and windshield wiper your legs side to side, very gently, not big windshield wipers, but this might feel really nice on the back. Find stillness again. Close the eyes. And press your feet into the ground and gently lift your hips up as you move the block out of the way and lower down onto your back. And press the hips into the ground all the way so you're engaging your abdominals and pressing your low back into the ground and then release bring your feet together and knees wide and then slide your shoulder blades towards each other a little bit to create a little puffing up of the chest and then re-relax them shoulders splay out arms by your sides and bring your awareness to the space underneath of your ears, under your jaw. Notice where the neck muscles connect to the collarbones, the shoulders. Just allow yourself to be really receptive here. Kind of like how a dog or cat's ears perk up when they hear a noise. See if you can make yourself so receptive that your ears perk up. And gently bring the knees up. And extend your legs long for Shavasana. Continue the practice of being receptive. The mind is so much more powerful than we realize. With awareness and attention to our neck and shoulders, we can train ourselves, train our muscles to soften. We can correlate that with the breath. Every time you exhale, 
the shoulders literally relax. And the muscles are actually softening. You can feel them. The tension lets go. You let go of the tension and it dissipates into nothing. Begin to bring awareness back into the body through the fingers and the toes, slowly and gently. When you're ready, reach your arms overhead and take a full body stretch. Then bend your knees, roll to one side. And slowly press up to a seat. Bring your palms together at your heart. And then to the third eye. And let's bow in gratitude for this beautiful practice. Thank you. Thank you so much, friends. If you enjoyed the practice, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, so we can continue practicing together. I'll see you next time.